Hi everybody and welcome to Heel Heat. This is a special Top 10 of Heel Heat. My name is George Coles. This is my tag team partner, Tugboat Thomas. My name is Frank. I'm his brother. You gotta tell him your full name. Frank Boyan. My, I'm his brother. Okay, Francis. Let's go. Let's screw you, dude. And uh, this is my brother, Frank. Uh, he's substituting for Gary because this, on this Top 10, we're not going to talk about wrestlers. We're talking about heels in video games. Now, for you video game fan, heel is a term meaning bad guy. Yeah, it's a wrestling term. Villains. Anyway, and I'll go ahead and start it off. Our number 10, probably the bad guys that started the bad guy craze off, the ghosts from Pac-Man. Pac-Man ghosts are pretty messed up. There's a, whole, there's a whole bunch of stories just revolving around what they come from. Like, it could be like vengeful ghost against Pac-Man, I don't know. Just, it's really cool. I mean, they're one of the first villains. Or it was just easy to draw. Yeah, that too. In 1970. <laughs> was it 1979 the first Pac-Man came yeah, out? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, graphics weren't that bad. I mean, you had basically a pizza pie with a slice missing, chomping at them. Yeah. But they weren't hard on the first couple levels, and when you got about 20, 30 levels deep, they got increasingly harder. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was one of them games, like, I know there's an end point, I think you have to get up to, like, level 150 or something, but instead of... They probably wouldn't have had an end point at all if the programming allowed it. Yeah. <laughs> but it was one of those games that really didn't have a point, you just played until you ran out of quarters or died. Yep. Number nine is the Lich King from World of Warcraft. Um... He's pretty iconic in the World of Warcraft lore. A lot of people remember him from Warcraft 3. Um, he ended up being the penultimate bad guy from the Wrath of the Lich King uh, expansion for World of Warcraft. I thought he was an awesome villain. Um, he just wants everybody to die so he can turn him into his undead minions. Um, he goes against his own master. He goes against... I mean, it's... He's just so evil basically I mean you know but it also has a tragic story to him you know almost like he's pure anarchy yeah yeah um you know he started out with good intentions and he ended up being a bastard most bad guys do yep now let's go on to our number eight guy from Mike Tyson's punch out Iron Mike Tyson <laughs> <laughs> he's so hard in that game dude they made a game just revolving around him now, if any of you guys are old enough to remember or had the original NES or played emulators over the years, 99% um, of Mike Tyson villains had a pattern that you could beat. And Mike Tyson did too. However, his pattern didn't allow for one mistake. So if you made one mistake, Mike Tyson beat. Yep. However, and his, par his pattern was so incredibly hard that I don't know anybody that beat him more than one time. Because once you beat him once, you're like, screw it, that's it, I'm done with the game. This, this is one of the age where when you made, when you were playing and it was hard, it was hard. It's I still mean, hard now. I, I play mean, it now and it's... I mean, yeah, but they don't make games that are... I mean, they do, but they don't make a lot of games that are just that hard anymore. Kind of like, um, what you call it, Ninja Gaming. Ninja Gaming, yeah. But that's... That, I mean, he's... Not a villain in the typical sense, but he is a bad guy that you, you have played to that game. You thought he was a villain. Yeah. <laughs> um, number seven um, is from a franchise of games that a lot of people know about, Umbrella from Resident Evil. Um, Umbrella is the corporation who created the T and G viruses, which started the zombie infestation in those games. And pretty much they're evil bastards throughout, what, about the first six games? Their whole idea is they want to bioengineer the ultimate weapon. Yeah. And in doing so, they almost annihilate the human race. In, in, in those movies that are kind of crappy, they do annihilate the human race, but in the games that doesn't quite happen. Yeah, but you can always see them. It, it's, 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 they're a, a, just a mass of greed and power-seeking that almost destroys the world. Kind of like Apple. Kind of like <laughs> Anyway, our next number six guy is also from an iconic series, Shang Tsung from the Mortal Kombat series. <coughs> Easily one of the hardest characters to fight 
in the series, basically, he had he could do everybody's move in the game. He could do your moves. He could switch them up in game. As the games progressed, he got progressively harder and harder. Um, there's some other baddies from the Mortal Kombat series, but in my opinion, he's the iconic one. I mean, he wasn't the hardest. There were some art that are harder than him. And, you know, and he's not even the, the ultimate arch nemesis in all the games. No, that's but true. he's, yeah, but he's the guy that you're like, he just exudes evil when you, I mean, it's kind of like he steals your identity when you fight him, and it's just, he's just, he just seems so dark to me. Then when uh, Mortal Kombat 2 came out, I remember it was at a place called the Fun Warehouse. You remember Fun Warehouse? Mm -hmm. Um it was kind of an arc, an old airplane hangar that turned into a massive arcade. And um, I can remember spending an easy $20 a night in there trying to beat this bastard to go all the way through the ladder. And, yeah, and you couldn't really design a strategy against him because he was just... Yep. He just switched two different characters' movesets, and you're like, ah, oh, goddammit. <laughs> uh, number five on our list is from the Zelda series, Ganon, or Ganondorf. Um, the 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 pig king, the b bandit king, whatever you want to call him, he is, he is he's not the bad guy in all of the Zelda games, but he's what you would consider the the biggest of the bunch. The iconic bad guy. Yeah. Just like Joker's not the bad guy in all of Batman, but he's the iconic bad guy for Batman. Yeah, and, and on, add on top of that, the fact that he's the only one in the series that actually possesses a portion of the the goddess's powers in that series. It, it just goes hand in hand with him being one of the big ones in that on the, list. On the first game, he had a, he had the last piece of the Triforce. Yep, yep. Yeah. And in um, Ocarina of Time, he had the Triforce. Uh, he had the entire Triforce. Yeah, that's right. Uh, no, Ocarina of Time, he had a piece of it. He had one of the pieces. And uh, Link to the Past... Of, he had two of the three pieces. Well, yeah. he kidnapped Zelda, but he didn't yeah. actually possess it yet. And then in... Uh, in the link to the past, he actually had the whole Triforce and wished on it. It just was an incomplete wish. So he he's pretty scary bad guy. Plus, he comes from probably the easily one of the greatest franchises. Oh in yeah, video game oh, yeah. History. oh yeah. Speaking of great video game franchises, our number four guy comes to us from Final Fantasy VII, Sephiroth. Sephiroth. Sephiroth is, I mean. He, he, he starts off, again, as a good guy. He, he part of soldier, leap force that tries to stop any stop enemies of Shinra. At the time, Shinra wasn't inherently evil in the sense that it was greedy. Um, and then eventually he finds out about his origins and decides, you know what, I'm just going to kill the planet, take all its energies, and ride it like a spaceship. Something like that, anyway. <laughs> that, in effect, when you got to him, you had to... The Knights of the Round, which he used to kill pretty much anything, it took like three of them to even wipe him out. And, you, you know, he appears in other games too, like for example the Kingdom Hearts series. Yeah. He is stupid hard in the Kingdom Hearts series. Like, it's insane. I've never played those, but I'll, I'll take your word on that. <laughs> I mean, who, who wants to walk around as Mickey and Donald Duck? You don't, you don't walk around as Mickey and Donald Duck. Never mind. <laughs> Our number three is from the Castlevania series, Dracula. What can I say about Dracula that, it, that most people don't already know? Um, he, he, he's been the constant baddie through all of them. Well, uh, until the more recent ones, yeah. He's been the bad guy yeah, for... A, no, more... The, the, um, up until a certain point in the series, it actually switches off to other bad guys but for, because he actually turns out to be the, the hero in a couple of them. But... Um, He's just, he's, he had, he's a story of, uh, whoa, I mean, he starts off he's tragically. Everybody knows. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows his story. I mean, but, he's, he's a character that's been through literary interpretations, movies, everything. Yeah. Comic books, and well represented in the, in the um, Castlevania series. I remember the original Castlevania, the NES version, it was so hard to beat him. I mean, when you... you for a side scroller, he was one of the hardest bad guys. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, he he was he's never really a pushover in any of the games. He's just I, quite I difficult. His, his hardest in in a incarnation was the uh, first the first um, oh yeah Castlevania they did on PlayStation One. 
Do you think it was uh, Symphony of the Night was his hardest one? Yeah, he was pretty yeah. hard in that one. That was the that's the first one for PlayStation One. Yeah, I think so. Oh yeah. Then I I get them mixed up. I get the little sub names mixed up, but that one was his. I think his hardest. It's the one that took me the most pain in the ass to beat. It's pretty rough in Symphony of the Night. Um, you would have to either grind or whatever to get to beat him. But he was. I mean, he ends up being the penultimate bad guy in that one too. Now our number two guy is probably the most pain in the ass <laughs> son of a bitch that's ever been in any video game on any system, computer, handheld, anything, laptop, anywhere you've played a video game ever, this guy was the most annoying, and that is Psycho Mantis from Metal Gear Solid. Oh my god, what can you say about Psycho Mantis? He, well, he well just, first of all, he would flip your controls. Oh yeah. Like he would he would reverse the access on your controller. He would um, turn the power off on your PlayStation when you were playing them. Oh yeah. He had the he would look at your saves and go, Oh, I see you have played Crash Bandicoot. Timer yeah. I'm gonna erase that and boom, your save is gone. He it, and not only that, but the way you beat him is like so off the wall what? I mean, you it, so you end up fighting him, and if you try to fight him with the controller in, in Player Port One, you can't beat him. You just can't do it because yeah, he shuts it down. He he would he would just lose to him every time. He predicts your moves, he shuts it down, all that stuff. How you beat him? You use Controller Port Two because then he can't predict your moves. Yeah, that's how you beat him, and it's it's just so like, and when he's messing with you, you're like, how do you know these things? Anyway. It's obvious. I mean, it's, it's. I mean, yeah, but still, it's just one of those things. But he did legitimately erase saves. That was. A, I mean, it's sucked. it's crazy, and you know, he. It's just so crazy. The first time he shut the power off on my PlayStation, I was like, "What the fuck did it break?" <laughs> I really, it, I really thought my PlayStation broke. I'm like, "Okay, the TV's still on. It's not like the power went out." I turn it back on, and there, I think he laughs at you when you turn it back on. Yep. But he was the most pain in the ass bad guy, and like you said, you, you actually somebody figured out the switching in the controller part port well, two. Well, the the uh, the general guy tells you. Does he? Yeah, he tells you you need to use controller port two. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right, because he's in your ear. Yeah. But yeah, he's the most pain in the ass guy. Yep. Now before we get into our number one bad guy or heel in video games. We got um, basically some guys that barely missed the list. We call this the best of the rest. And the first one I want to talk about is uh, my mom's favorite, our mom's favorite, Mother Brain from the Metroid series. Now, in the first game, Mother Brain, you know, isn't that impressive. It's basically a brain in a jar. Yeah. But when you get to Super Metroid and it comes to life, like you're thinking it's the same thing as the first game and it comes to life and she can literally beat the dart if you're not careful. It's impressive. It's yeah. impressive. Um, another one on the list here is uh, Comstock from Bioshock Infinite. It's a fairly recent game, and the reason why he 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 I kind of wanted to put him on the list a little higher up, but like he's not iconic enough. But what's cool about him is it just so happens you know there's there's some really cool stuff. That I don't want to reveal too much, but he's racist. He's <laughs> set in his ways. Highly religious. Racist, you know. I mean, and there, and it's there's a really cool uh, little myth, little backstory to him that when you play the game, it just blows your mind. And you know, there you go. Now another one that's from recent games. Um, it's come on with the advent of um, social gaming, where you can play with anybody at any time. From the Call of Duty series is not really a group, but. The glitcher slash 12-year-old kids that just annoy the shit out of you. <laughs> just on there. Your mom. Hey, your mom. mom. My penis. <laughs> my penis. You're gay. You're gay. You know, and you go on, and, you, and they can they can take a really enjoyable gaming session and just shit all over it. For yeah, and half of them, half of them, they, they just say the same racist, homophobic, stupid shit yep. over and over again. Yep. Annoy the crap out of you. Yeah, and then half the time they gum up the system where, like, let's say you're playing with a couple of your friends, you can't even hear them on your headset because these idiots are going, ah, ah. and you know, and 
you also deal with the glitchers and the people yeah. who are cheating. It's, they're almost always the younger kids that just like to mod their stuff so that they can get, they can play a game. Well, actually, they're not really playing the game. They'll let the game play it, them, so play it for you, but whatever. Um, another one that's on our list is Ares from the God of War series. Um, we picked Ares because he's like the very first one, and I think he's like in the first and second game mostly. Like, he doesn't really, you kill him, I think, in the second game? I don't know, I'm not sure. I have to go back and play him all again to be sure. But, uh, he, he's pretty iconic. He's res partially responsible for the death of the hero's family. He, I mean, he makes that, that white ash that's on, um... Um, oh, Kronos. Kronos, thank you. That's on him is is actually the ash of his family members that's seared into his flesh because of the horrible thing he's done. It's it's just it's pretty pretty dark actually. <laughs> and the last guy that just barely missed the list is Doctor Robotnik from the the Sonic the Hedgehog games. The, uh, the and you know the only reason he didn't make the list is Sonic. He, he was easy. He was just too oh, easy yeah, yeah. to beat. Oh, yeah. he's, he's, he's iconic by far. But there was just, I mean, if all you have to do is jump up and hit him oh. and dodge, like, some really slow-moving tentacles. He, he, I mean, he just was he, There were bosses that were way harder than him in the game. Yeah. I mean... And it, it was almost like a, this is it? No, yeah, but he seemed more comical than a uh, truly evil villain, you know what I mean? But, yeah, yeah whatever. Now, before we get in on to our number one, um, if you guys like the list, like where we put everything, think we put someone up too high, put someone out down too low, left ones, left someone off altogether, let us know what you think. Hit us up on our Facebook. Hit us up on our Twitter. Put it down where? Uh, in the comment se section. You're supposed to go down there. Oh. Down in our comments. <laughs> it's worse than Gary. Who could have thought I had to, I'd have a ghost guest host worse than Gary? Okay. Jesus. <laughs> now uh, I'm going to let you take the number one since you are the guest on the show. All right. Our number one on our list is probably the most iconic bad guy that we could think of. Um, that would be Bowser from the Super Mario or Mario series of games. I... I think any guy that, that kidnaps the same woman, I, woman over and over and over again is just a sick bitch. I figure he's just taking advantage of a retarded plumber. Because, like, if she keeps getting... First off, she gets, she's probably retarded. I think they're both retarded. What kind of security does the princess have? I, I mean, she's probably just like, Oh, Toadstool. Bowser's here! <laughs> Isn't Toadstool supposed to be her security? God, that's horrible security. <laughs> like, shouldn't he have stopped him, him at some point... Somewhere down the line, over the last twenty five, no, it's more than t it's like almost thirty years now. And then they, then there's the whole aspect of it that gets a little bit darker, and that um, they they hinted for a long time that they the Bowser's it. children, yeah, that Bowser's children are are Toad are Princess Toadstool's kids too, and then they outright tell you in galaxies, which just, I mean, like it pretty much means either she was a willing participant. Or he raped her. I'm guessing she's a willing participant because she gets kidnapped every couple years. So, I mean, you know, maybe Mario needs to get the hand. Maybe Mario's the villain in that game. Think about it that way. Maybe he's the one kidnapping the princess away from <laughs> the person she wants to be with. I mean, for a kid's game, for a guy to be kidnapping and raping and all it's pretty of dark. I mean, they don't say they did rape and everything, but, you know. It's, it's implied. It's There's, like, a subtle implication there. Because, I mean, and it, and I love those little backstories about that kind of stuff. You know, they don't, you know, delve into it, obviously, that would be PR nightmare. But. <laughs> Plus, among everything else, he's probably one of the coolest looking bad guys on our list. Oh, yeah. Giant dinosaur in a turtle shell. Mm -hmm. Spikes. It's awesome. There you go. He's quite hard in a couple games too. Yeah, he's he's difficult on a he's downright in, impossible on Mario two, the Super Mario two, the one that everybody skips over. Yeah, because basically it was a clone of one, but yeah. nothing really different. They didn't. There wasn't real revolution till Super Mario three. Yeah, from Mario Brothers to Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers, there was a big jump. 
from Mario 1 to 2, no big jump. 2 to 3, huge jump. Mm -hmm. And then they went to, um, what was the Super... What was the Super, they did Super the, Nintendo? What they went Paper Mario on Super. Nintendo. They did Paper Mario. They did oh well, there's all so many Mario games. Then as then when it started waiting out, they came in with Super Mario sixty four, and that just and don't, that was don't forget Super Mario RPG. In which case, yeah, that was horrible. Oh my, are you kidding me? I forget that. The, oh my god, you that was sucks terrible. so bad. Terrible. RPG is like one of the greatest ones of the bunch. Terrible. He doesn't like RPGs. Terrible. It's the only reason why I don't like it. The game was horrible. No, the game was great. It was terrible. Oh my god. It sucked. It, there is literally... You're going to have like literally thousands of people screaming like, God, you're a retard. I don't have that many viewers. Yeah, so whatever. And they're wrestling fans. They, they're probably like, what the hell are these idiots <laughs> talking about this? <laughs> they're expecting us to talk about Hulk Hogan and Roddy Roddy Piper and CM Punk and... No. No, we're talking about video game villains. <laughs> Basically, I only did this so I could put my brother France, Francis on the show. Oh, it's Frank. God damn it. <laughs> Are you getting mad, Francis? How do you feel about that new well experience? Anyway. <laughs> but basically, that's... I hate you so much. <laughs> that's all, all we have for this week, for this top ten. My name is George Coles. My name is Frank Boyan. And this is Heal Heat.